Islam. Well, <clears throat> welcome to the show. I don't know what happened to Anna E. She and you now I don't hear her. You know what? You know what? I'm yeah, sitting here I know what you know what? Yeah, I know what. Tell me, tell me. You unmuted me, but you didn't unmute yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I know she's running. <laughs> oh, boy. Yes. Islam, yes, yes. Islam, Islam, everyone. Welcome to Sister Standing on Law. This is your host, Anita Ill, along with my co host, Reverend Ryan Bay. Mm-hmm. And I just want to start out by Saya saying either Happy New Year or Happy New Year's Eve, depending on. If you're one of those people who look at the New Year's as being on the 20th or the 21st, I've well, always looked at it as being on the 21st. Bit. Yes. That, <laughs> yes. That, that really uh, comes from, depending on, like, whatever studies you may have done, whoever wrote the book and wherever they were were on the place on the earth. Remember, the earth is 24, at, it, it, it's, uh, 24 hours as it turns. So while we're sleeping, um, the other side is, is is awake, vice versa. So that is where that really comes from because in reality, I mean, you know, it is about where the planets are. Um, and so we have to look at that 24-hour basis. Now, when we really want to know when spring is, oh, there it is. I was just looking. When the buds come on the trees, when too much um, are up, um, even though uh, not too long ago it was so warm that some of the trees budded, but then the frost came in and hit them back down. But those are signs of, of when a season is in. That's why you have, um, when you have different, it has a book, I think we have one of the Oracle, and it tells you based on your sign what you like to eat, what you like to smell. All of that is based on the time of year that those things are exalted on the earth plane. So you you could definitely go by that because that is what it's going by. But as far as, uh, I mean, that's what it's based on, but as far as right now, some people think the 20, 21st, it's the E somewhere and it's the day and another. That's all that it is. I say, well, mm-hmm. let's just make it a three. got to make it a three-day celebration anyway, and let me tell you why. Because it's the same as right now, well, the the uh, winter uh, solstice. And the summer solstice is the exact same thing um, where, where the sun, because it's all about the direction of the sun, quite frankly. That's really what it is all about. Any uh, interjections or, or, or things that occur on the earth to change uh, some of the climate, which you know they've been trying to change the climate, trying to. But uh, any of those are like interjections in that because the this whole thing all – uh, even Easter, which 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 is going to be celebrated based on the first full moon after this spring equinox. Now, a lot of people who go to church and they're Christians, they don't know that they're celebrating uh, Easter based on a cosmological event. But if they read um, the second meeting of the Nicene Council, which is which is in seven, oh God, I think it's seven twenty five uh, A.D. or seven twenty eight. I'm not sure they will see that that whole discussion was about when they were going to, in fact, uh, acknowledge Easter, you know, the, uh, which is the most fertile time, which is the spring equinox where we are where we are now, where everything is, you know, uh, being impregnated and, 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 and you know, uh, uh, well, fruition is coming out of the earth. So I just wanted to say that, that um, and I wanted to add that I'm looking at my calendar just to see where everything is. I believe we're in a void, of course, of the moon. I'm trying to check this calendar. I have the little blurry. It was copied, and I just realized that it's blurry. So first day of spring, um, oh, moon is in Virgo. So, hey, Annie, that's perfect because we're going to be analyzing and discussing this document, the treaty. Mm-hmm. So, you know, <laughs> We have the energies uh, to assist us in that. That's interesting. However, um, at, oh, I can't read this, 430, is that not? It just came out of void. It just went into Virgo securely at, I believe this says nine, or no, it'll be three hours later. So 12, it just did, just now. So we're 
we're in sync with that with our thoughts of analyzing. Um, so I just wanted to bring that to the table as to why. So I don't want people to say, well, I believe in it to be on the 20th and I believe it to be on the 21st. No, that it is just a matter of where you are uh, uh, on this earth plane as to when others may have acknowledged it and there, thereby have written it down as such. Islam. Mm-hmm. All right, Islam, Islam. But here's the thing. My this is my position. We have to plan this better next year. I think that <laughs> we should have a New Year's Eve party of our own on the day before the new the spring equinox, which is officially the new year. I think we need to plan it so that next year we can have yeah. our New Year's Eve party. Well, I'm gonna tell you something, Annie. Okay. What we ought do, what we ought do, is we do nothing else. At minimum, we are to celebrate because remember, celebration is from celestial vibration. Everything is based on uh, the universe, the planets, the heavenly bodies. So we should admit all of us, however small or large, every single season change because it marks the movement of the sun, whether the sun is shining or not, <laughs> on your end of the world. But um, it marks that movement and uh, 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 all four all four corners and all four seasons. We should always acknowledge them, every last one of them. We should have that party then. So we've got to have four, yeah. four parties, four celebrations a year at minimum. <laughs> yes, yes, mm-hmm. yes, yes. Because the spring, the spring economics kicks off the first, really, the first celebration. And, mm-hmm. and to me, for me, because I'm, Father up north, I am so happy for today. <laughs> I am so but happy. I bet you were. I bet you were. But I, I, I got to interject this in regards to astrology. It just it just hit me. Although it's, you're happy about it getting warmer and we are seeing the yes. birds and the trees and the leaves and all that, this isn't really the height of the sun station. In other words, the sun it's, is happy too. You see, because the sun falls. Yes. In, in, in the uh, fall equinox or what they call the autumn equinox, equinox it's at its detriment because it's falling away from, say, right. say, as it relates to this earth. But when it gets to Aries, a lot of people, um, some people mistake that. Aries is not the home of the sun. The home of the sun is in uh, Leo. So, but what's happening now, the sun is rejoicing too because it is exalted, but it is not home because it's all about home, right? So as it does its traversing, traversing, it's exalted right now too. It's happy because it knows it's on its incline to reach Leah, which is its home, you know? It's interesting. Happy New Year to everyone. Well, can I ask you this? And is, the weather, is the weather warmer right now where you are? Oh, yes. Ah, because we're going to be getting colder next time. But, no, uh, it's warmer, and it's getting warmer. Uh, it was, this is it the was true global warming, warming, right? <laughs> huh? This is the true global oh, warming, oh. nothing to fear. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. And I'm loving, I'm loving this. I, I, I get excited with, you know, because, you know, up north we get a harsher winter than the south, of course. So as soon as we get past, um, you know, December 25th, which is a wonderful time of the year, um, with the amazement that the sun does where it's, it, go, it goes down and stays, stays asleep, so to speak, for three, that's just an amazing occurrence just to even um, be aware of. But it also marks between that date up north and uh, shortly before March 20th, it, those, that's the harshest time of winter. So if you make, so, you know, as soon as we get past the 25th of December, my mind is on the 21st of March. That's it. I don't see anything in between just the 21st of March because I know the spring is here, the trees are going to be budding, the squirrels are going to be chasing each other, the trees are going <laughs> to open up, and you're just going to look down the street and see green, and that's, all I want to see. I like. I appreciate the winter because the winter cleans the air and the water and the earth. 
I mm-hmm. appreciate well, that, but I am so happy when the sun returns. Yes. Um, well, I, in the on the twenty first and we know that it's exalted. Right, so. but the strength of it it starts to it increases, and then you know when June twenty first gets here, I'm just happy as. I don't even know what. <laughs> We're talking, and as I'm thinking, I think people should, we should really mark our lives and our milestones and our goals by season, not by, oh, next week or the next, uh, even though there's only seven, you know, seven days in, in, in a week, seven days in a month, seven days in a year. When you look at the astrology, well, you'll, you'll see that it's, um, that, that that is the seven, you know, that, that the circle seven is the astrology wheel. But I think I think marking by seasons, like, because before you know, I mean, we were just putting down all of the summer stuff, you know, and the chairs and the umbrellas, and before you know it, I, I said before we know it, it's going to be spring again. And surely enough, it comes real fast. It's really just 90 degrees, and it's a corner mm-hmm. being turn. It's a corner being turn, and it's also the thing that we – should utilize in our lives is that, you know, even when you start something new or when you meet a new friend or or a prospective suitor or whatever it is you're doing, you know, you wait for the that first that first square, that first ninety degree turn, that's three months, right? And then you will take another turn or not. <laughs> Most of the time, you know, you you don't after three months you realize, uh this person isn't really. This isn't really what I thought it was. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just the way yes. it goes. You know. But anyway, we should mark our lives by. I think when you're, especially when you're really busy doing things, and even if we don't mark our lives, here's the key, here's the key. Our marks are our lives are marked by the seasons, whether we realize it or not. Right. Right. Yes. 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 Um, and you're, you know, whether we realize it or not, so um, we ought to plan around that because really that's what our ancestors did. So we need to, you know, look into that. Mm-hmm. Here we are at another broadcast of Sister Standing on Law, the Treaty of Peace and Friendship, seventeen eighty six, the discussion. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> now the discussion is about everything we have learned about the Treaty of Peace and Friendship, which to me was amazing. I mean, there was just, and there's some more. There's some more analyzing that can go on with that, but I trust that everyone will do that independently, or maybe you can even break off into groups if you have enough people to do that, and you can continue studying the Treaty of Peace and Friendship. But the salutation and introduction uh, was part one, uh, and then we had articles one through twelve for part two, and then articles thirteen through twenty-five for part three. And here we are at part four, the discussion. Now, the discussion. What I would like to do is to open up the line for everyone to participate. It's going to. I mean, I think it's you know everyone who would like to participate, to participate. Um, And just to be mindful of everyone's um, space in terms of speaking so that we can have uh, a a conversation that is cohesive, but yet we're not over-talking each other as I mean, but I I know I'm not saying that it's a bad thing because in our, I know at least with me, in my excitement, I will probably talk over someone. But I will do my best not to do that and try to respect everyone's space. But this is just so amazing that I feel we have to do a discussion. And um, we have until... Well, possibly like, somebody wants to, to have a comment already from the study from the last time. Yes, absolutely. So... What I'm going to do is whoever would like to participate in this discussion regarding the Treaty of Peace and Friendship and all that we have learned in, let's see, what has it been, three months. This is for month number four. Press one on your telephone dial. And what I am going to do 
is I'm going to unmute everyone, and then we'll see who wants to start the discussion, and we will go from there. Islam? All right, so we have caller 410-444. You are unmuted. Caller 513-981. You are unmuted. Uh, caller 973-280. I think that's Sister Carol Bay. You are Islam. unmuted. Happy New Year Year to you. Okay, call it 619-807. You are unmuted. Call it 256-320. You are unmuted. And that is all I have so far. So everyone who wants to be a part of this discussion has pressed one on their telephone dial, and they are unmuted. Um, What I would ask is that, if anyone detects some feedback, just mute your phone if you're not talking. That way we won't have any feedback. So who would like to begin the discussion uh, regarding the Treaty of Peace and Friendship 1786? <laughs> wow, Islam. All right. Islam. It- Islam, I am Hassan Ghazi Obey at Northwest of Mexico. How's the family? Happy New Year, Islam. Well. <laughs> um, it, it's weird because, uh, not weird, but lovely. You say who's going to start it off, and I've said before that both my uh, son and ascendant is in cancer. So uh, I guess I'll kick this off, being the cardinal that I am. I wanted to uh, point out uh, about the Treaty of Peace and Friendship. Uh, since we were talking about astrology, I did want to point out the fact that the month that things were taking place was the 12th of May of 1784, the 11th of March of 1785, uh, in London, uh, October 5th, 1785, Paris, October 11th, uh, 1785, which is the same year, and uh, the 25th uh, of Shaban, 1200. So I just wanted to bring that to the table to, uh, I guess, for the family to speak about what happened at those different times. Uh, as the Treaty of uh, Peace and Friendship was lining out. Islam? Great. Yeah. Islam. Islam. Well, you know, the discussion today is about the Treaty of Peace and Friendship 1786 and what we have learned in the last four months in our study. That's what the discussion is about. But, you know, if you have some special information regarding those dates that you would like to that would be interesting, yeah. provide, then do so. Yes. Oh, okay. Other than okay. that. Okay. Okay. Um, I, was, I was just noticing that, uh, well, I'll just start off with the first one and then I, I'll yield the floor. Um, just noticing exactly where the where the opening, and I'll, I'll read uh, to all persons to whom these presents. Uh, shall come or be made uh, known, whereas the United States of America and Congress assembled by their commission bearing the date the 12th day of May, 1784. And and I was pointing out that that's in the middle of Taurus. And and I just wanted to know what was the significance, basically, if the family wanted to just start there. You know, I, I can be very verbose, but I'm doing the best to discipline myself because I love when the mother's uh, speaking to me so I can further grow. But what what's the significance of this taking place in Taurus and what's happening governmental-wise, so to speak? Yes, Lon? All right. As long as, um, mm-hmm. I, 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 I don't know. I, I don't know I what was going on. Look, 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 here's the thing. We're talking about the salutations and introduction and the 25 articles of the Treaty of Peace and Friendship. The, the words that we looked up, um, some of the uh, revel, uh, uh, um, the unveiling that took place and what that means to us as Moors then and now. That's what we're talking about. We're not looking into any astrological significance of date. We're looking well, at you know what I, mean? I was I was saying something, and I apologize for right. seeming to object. But I was talking, but I had my phone mute. So what oh, I was right. going to <laughs> yes, and I was 
but but what you're saying is correct. But however, first thing you need to do, come back at us um, because I don't have the map in front of me. But all of those, uh, many, all of those names uh, of places were over here on the North American continent. Now, you do you have the King Alpha plan? Yes. Okay. Do you see the exotic map that's still there? Let me let me grab it. Let me grab it. Let me grab it. There's a there's a map called the exotic map. Okay, so the, it's in there in a couple places, but it's at the, it's at the end of the book as well. Okay. You find where Torres is. You will find many of the locations that you you assume we all have assumed is somewhere else is really not. It's right here. So. Mm-hmm. Then when you find that, you'll get the significance. Like, for instance, the Magna Carta. Now, we're not talking about the Magna Carta today, but just to give you an example, they say that it was signed on the shores of um, Runnymede. They spell it R-U-N-N-Y-M-E-D-E, I believe. But it's really Runnymede, which is right here outside of what we know as the Empire in New York. They call it today Runnymede, New Jersey, for instance. And there's a whole host of other things, uh, 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 names, but what you might want to do is you look at that map and you find that and you get back to us another time about where that is because you're going to find more what you Islam, peace and love. Not, not, to you. Cut your wisdom, not to cut your wisdom, beloved, was the map the one on the uh, on the King Alfred plan is right after the temporary jail cells part, the little purple map? Well, Page no, we're in the very back. I have the King Alfred right here. Um, there's a small version of it. And then there's a larger version of it where you can see it much better. And um, and hold on, I'll tell you, it's in the back, it's in the very back. Let me show you if you've got it in uh, the one that we, we have uh, put out. I'm, I, I want to say the last page. It is the last page. It's the last page, an exotic map of, the, of uh, featuring towns that actually exist. That's what it says. All right, so we look at that, and there okay. you're going to find you're going to find Sudan, Scotland, Paris. You're going to find Moab. You're going to find Cairo. You're going to find Madrid, Morocco, within the North American continent. All right? Yes, thank you mm-hmm. very much. It's mom. It's mom. Right. Peace and love. Mm-hmm. Okay. Islam family, Carol Bay, Northwest of Mexico. All right. Greetings, everyone. Now, what I found to, um, about uh, analyzing and discussing this treaty that we just finished uh, with, what I found without a doubt, and I've cleared it in my mind and in my spirit, is that, like you just referenced, uh, Sister Rod, is that everything is, was done right here on, on our continent. So, and because uh, I know early on in my on learning and 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 the, and the teachers, I, I was a little I was confused as well because I'm thinking it's over there because we know Paris is across the water now, not realizing that these places were right there. So that helped me. That helped me so much to, without a doubt now. And I am fully clear and understand that everything that took place right here with the signing of the uh, of the um, declaration. The signing of our, our con- the Constitution, 1791, all of that, all of those names are right here on this continent. So that that helps me so much now. And even when I'm writing my writs, I'm so so clear now that uh, yeah. that it's here, okay. and it, it's it's helped me 100 percent. And I truly thank you and appreciate all. And that's what I wanted to contribute. Peace and love. Yes, yes, and that's why they call this. Uh, we say this is the center of civilization, and we try, and, and and also why they call it the land of, of 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 the temple of the sun and the moon, and also they refer to it as the land of milk and honey. That's later on, you know, because it is the center, and 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 then you go into more where you realize the empire, you know, uh, New York is quote unquote they nickname it the Empire State, you know what I mean, and things like that. Um, uh, but that that helps with the studies. Just like we're talking about the treaty and the date, I think everybody is real clear that we are crazy when we use MCY, when we say CCY, say this is uh, 2016, we'll say CCY 2016. 
and then NTY 1436. People don't understand, well, oh, what are they doing, changing the calendar? I mean, you know, really calendars are man-made anyway, but going by what was already documented in the treaty itself that we're discussing, um, I think we already brought that out. And I know you know it, where it, said, it was signed by the Sultan in 1780, I mean, uh, uh, in 2000, they have, I mean, uh, no, 1,200, but really you have to give or take three years because when you, when the document is, is, is established and then when it becomes totally finished or ratified, it could take up to three years, just like the Constitution did, you know, for everything to be ratified. So right there is the proof, historical, historical congressional document, which proves the, the difference in the calendar. <laughs> Excuse me. You know, so... So, um, you know, it's good when you can, as you said, find those things and it helps you with your uh, receiving the information. It's gone. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Islam. Islam, Islam. this is Sister Jane Bay. Hey, hey, Islam. Sister. <laughs> okay, so, um, yeah, so I had a lot of thoughts on the treaty and peace and friendship, and I am. Really upset right now because I cannot find the question that answers to last month, but um, I'm just going to try to go without it. Freestyle it. But anyway, um, so right. if I go <laughs> freestyle it, right. So this is what I what, what came to my mind. Um, first of all, because we did the Constitution first and then we did the Treaty of Peace and Friendship, I always kind of put those two together because they actually do go together mm-hmm. anyway. Mm-hmm. And um, so... Article 4 in the Constitution, um, what I did for myself was, um, because we had questions for both of them, I kind of like went through all of them and the questions all over again and was just seeing how they kind of correlated. And so in Article 4 of the Constitution, it was a question, and it was, it said, what are the citizens entitled to? And the answer was, the citizens of each state shall be entitled to all privileges and immunities of citizens in each state. In the several states, and then it said, "What do you think those mean? This mean when it says entitled to all privileges and in humanity, I mean, immunities of citizens in the several states." And it said, "Whatever the privileges is of the citizen in one state must be for citizens in other states." Mm-hmm. And so then it brings me back to the Treaty of Peace and Friendship, which I cannot find my questions to. But I remember <laughs> it was one question. It was okay. It was one question. And you can help me out if you remember. It was a question. I, it wasn't a question. We read it, and it was about um, the. It was about uh, right to move, basically to move, um, not being molested. It was uh, um, da 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 da. But basically, it all like came back to me in one pool. Is basically that these these documents were written for the people who came over here and for us to enforce it. But at the mm-hmm. same time, that doesn't mean that that those same rights. I mean, we were that those same rights wasn't for us too, as far as um, the privileges and. Um, heck, I'm so mad I can't find this. Um, it was in the Treaty of Peace and Friendship. It was a question, and when you had like 23 questions, it was the one where we talked about uh, the question, and I actually answered. It was the one where you. Uh, it was the question. About um, it was an example. You say give an example. Well, it wasn't a question, but we end up saying giving an example of how if they stopped us, if we was to put that same scenario as using the automobile or and or your conveyance, um, and they stopped us, um, how are they violating the treaty of peace and friendship? And the answers was they're not using a law of the land, which would be the constitution, mm-hmm. and they're not. They were um, stealing people's property. Um, they were using people as far as other people. For instance, it was uh, if they if it was a if you if they stopped you and somebody in your car was doing something, um, yeah. then they basically hold you accountable. If you remember that question, but and and yes, that kind of yes. brought me back to the Constitution because um, all of this is talking about our right to move for real. I mean, not all of it, but basically our right to really do what we are. What we want to do, yeah, what we want to do, without violating, 
Yeah, without violating another individual, of course. But basically, to do, we have the right to do what, exactly what we want to do. And also, mm-hmm. um, these these uh, these laws are put down for all people. You know, not just you know it was written for them, but also because these are the things that we we um, embody within ourselves, uh, within our starting from the household, and then we brought it out to the society. And so, um, it's just something we should you know, know from elementary, you know, kind of like treat people the way you would like to be treated. It's just that simple. Mm-hmm. And so, um, yep. but I, like I said, I can't, I can't, I don't know where, where my question's at, but um, that, that was something that came, the, that was something that came to my mind um, when I thought about the treaty and analyzing it and, and making it correlate with the, the constitution too, as well, especially article four of the constitution. And um, yeah, so. And when you know, I find the question, that's where I'm going to go in on. But, yeah, I, 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 I hear the floor right there. I, I wanted to make a comment. Um, yeah, when you find it, bring it back in. But it's interesting because she specifically was talking about um, the – she's talking about in, egress and regress, ingress and regress, right, or is it egress and ingress. What it is, in short, <laughs> is is the greatest liberty of all in its most restricted sense is the ability to move to and fro as you wish to. Mm-hmm. And that means traveling in any mode of conveyance you wish to without anybody hindering you, unless it is, of course, due process of law, uh, which you and I all know there's no due process of law when they stop you on the highways and the byways now and hinder you. And Now, I, I have to add this because I'm working on this book, um, and, you know, it just started out because someone called and said that, um, you know, the, the policy enforcer or highwayman uh, working for some private county corporation somewhere um, told them that that because he was traveling without a licensed instrument that it was a crime. Now, I want everybody to hear and hear clear because this is why we're doing with with this treaty. It, it's there. The treaty is to show the people that, you know, we are a nation ourselves. That now they have not taught this at all, and that we know, no, and there's a reason for it. Let me just bring to the modern day what's happening with this ability to pass, as we say, or to not be hindered. Um, and it requires study because it, I just found. I don't know who gave it to me. I don't know where I got it from. Um, the Well, in short, here it is. Look, you have the freedom to move. What happened, and the treaty is saying that as well, and so does the Constitution. Now, we we did we did describe this or, or authorize this for the other citizens, as she just said. Now, Prophet Noble Drew Ali said, hey, you better enforce the Constitution. Unless, uh, if you don't, you're going to be molested by other citizens. They'll do what they want with you. Well, he did not lie because that is what is happening because we have not enforced the Constitution, which the treaty precedes it as a superior and a whole succession of documents do, but the treaty does, and then came the Constitution. We know this to be true because we talked about it. First there was, look, these Europeans, they came, these modern Europeans, these foreigners, they all they wanted to do was commerce. So what have they done with your right to travel? Have forced by threat, duress, arrest, physical um, uh, 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 bodily harm, they are forcing you to register yourself as a driver, which is commerce, or chauffeur, same thing. We found something in 1902 from the uh, state attorney general. Now, some people will say, well, what are you, 1902? That's a long time ago. No, it is not, because no new laws have been made. We all know this because Congress is in the deal. What have these people done? They have taken, if you want to be a chauffeur or driver, if you want to be hired, if you want to take, uh, uh, you know, do those things for hire or for wages, which means you'll work for someone else, driving, all right? If you wish to do that, that is your choice. And this is spelled out in the state attorney general's letter. It is your choice. And if you want to take your automobile and turn it into a vehicle that is 
an employee, because that's what the vehicle becomes, uh, and is reg and register it with the Secretary of State, because that's where you're supposed mm-hmm. to be registering it. Not with your lo- not the DMV administration, which is an a- really an agency. If you want to do that, that is your will. But do you have to? No. So what have they done? This is where truth and falsehood is strangely mixed. It is. It, it truly is. They have found a way to hinder to to make you think that you have to go and get a licensed instrument in order to travel on the highways and that you have to register your 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 automobile and turn it into a uh, a, a a commercial uh vehicle this is simply all that they've done now i'm telling you if when once all of us know that we can collectively kill this thing all right because mm-hmm. so many people think they just simply believe that these people are government, that these people are the authority. That is it, and that is all. That is why for generations, this is what we are thought. I will say this. It seems daunting, but when you break down the components to this most simplest form, it's not. It's simple. It's simple. What I just said is, is, is simple, but, I mean, however, think about this. That treaty says, "Hey, don't mess with us while we're 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 traveling, because otherwise, in that you're talking war, right? You're talking some physical art, right? So let's think about it. If we were to 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 do this, and if these people who are disguised, that's what Title 18 is about. They're in disguise, and they were to continue to try to hinder you, that would be civil infraction, right? Now, if they were to continue to try to hinder you, hinder you." Continue to continue to try to hinder you, hinder you. That seems like civil war, because that's what they're saying. They're saying if you don't, tra- if you don't, if you don't register yourself as a driver and do commerce, so we can make finance off of it, because that's the bottom line. Mm-hmm. And if you don't take your automobile and register it with us. We're going to beat you upside your head. Now, this is really what we have to see because that's what the hell is really going on. So back yep. to, that is it, not at all. It, it is, no, look, here's the problem, and I know you can probably speak on this. Too many people want to get into, let me go dive into the commercial law. Mm-hmm. Well, this is not about commerce. And so you spend mm-hmm. your will. And you you know, and try to get all in bed with them with the commerce. They're the ones who came here to do commerce. That's why the sister said this was written for the fathers. However, and I love what she said because it's a great, great observation. It was written for those other citizens on your ancestral estate. It most certainly was. It is the national constitution, and it is written for them as a guideline. But you and I have the duty of enforcing it. Why? So that we are not molested, and that's what what is ha- what is happening. So I, uh, you know, stop trying to go into commerce and you know what they're doing because you know they came for commerce. You don't have to do that in order to travel. Mm-hmm. It's wrong. It's wrong. That that's absolutely correct. But you know what? That is so why Prophet Noble Drew Ali said to study. And a lot of people they really they really don't take that. They don't take that serious, or they don't take it serious enough. Because I'm going to tell you, uh, there's no way, there's no way that you can be confused about where a maxim is, where your ancestral estate is, what government is, where your government is. Um, you you got more talking about oh we gonna we gotta make our own government and make our own laws. Oh, if you God. are really studying as Prophet Noble Juwami said to study, you would never be confused about that. Never, because it's all in the history. These look modern Europeans came over here. There is no record of them starting a, a, a government for themselves here. There is no record of them nope. establishing laws for themselves here. That's you right. You know that if you study, because a lawyer means a layman, and the only 
the only people who can write law, which is why no laws have been written since 1861, everything that's been written is policies and procedures, regurgitating yep. what has already been written, because the only people that can write law is the Aboriginal indigenous people of the yep. land. Because this is oh. our home. That's like somebody coming into your house and they're going to write a law that says uh, uh, you can only go into your refrigerator between the hours of 2 and 4. That's mm-hmm. absolutely ridiculous. But if you look at it from that, and I know it sounds simple, but see, law is simple. That's why most people miss it. Uh, yep. If you can look at the simplicity of that and apply it to this land and the law that's already been here, the government that's already been here, you will know exactly who is who and what is what. And if you're studying, you will never be confused because you have to know the history. That's why the prophet said you, you always got an illustrious history. You don't even know the half. And if I told you everything, you go back to sleep. (laughs) We Moors are the only people on planet Earth until we created the modern Europeans. That's when everything started to slide to the left. We should have never did it, but we did it. All right? So now we we created (laughs) these modern Europeans. And we created them for dishonorable reasons, and we treated them like animals because part of their DNA is an animal. So now look at this. They came over from Great Britain to work as workers here, slaves and indentured servants here. They didn't have an identity. They didn't have a nation. They didn't have a nationality. And hell, some of them didn't even have names, appellations. All right? These are the very people. This is why you got to study the history. These are the people that some of our own Moors think wrote the law and established the government on this land. These are the same people that thought that if you went too far, you fall off of planet Earth. That's not even, that's not even possible. It's not possible. But you are, you're going to think... Stuff like that is possible as long as you're not studying. This is why Prophet Noble Juali said, study, 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 and you have an illustrious history, and our history is so illustrious and so vast and so incredible and in some cases strange that if he was to tell you everything, your ass would go back to sleep. <laughs> Islam? Yeah, Islam. Islam. You know what? Here's the problem. Problem is we don't have our own schools, so I believe. Uh, I just want to introduce. I trust that, and I think that um, that the, the generations. That's what it's for. For the generations that are in the womb now and coming, if they get this information, they'll be fine with it. Believe me, they'll be fine. But that is also a directive to have your own schools. Well, he said that to the temples. It was to all of us that we as Moors, we need to have our own school. So that's where we failed at. So now they strategically left out the Treaty of Peace and Friendship and teaching anything about American history because they're only talking about themselves and teaching their history and interjecting yours as if you got peeled yep. off of a wall somewhere. <laughs> it's wrong. Exactly. It's wrong. Exactly. <laughs> it's wrong. Their history, and again, their history is very short. It's wrong. Go ahead, Sue. Islam found is is terrible again, and also with this treaty of um, peace and friendship. I'm I'm talking from memory and some and the questions I pulled back up here on the computer, so I can because I packed everything away. I'm I'm ready to head back north. I'm south now, and the the trees have bloomed. I know everybody thinks I'm crazy. My niece doesn't want me to leave, but no, I'm I'm ready to head back north. But um, how long have you been down there? Because you it was supposed to be six months. Two and a half years. No, no, no. How long has it been? How long has two, it been? Two and a half years. Wow. <laughs> and it was only supposed wow. to be six months. But I laughed because uh, they think I'm crazy for leaving and come back. It's beautiful. I love my family and what have you, but it's time to get back up. And plus, I, I miss my grandchildren uh-huh. and what have you. 
But uh, does this mean wait a minute? Does this mean you're going to be on the eastern, northern border, kind of close to what we call New York today? Yep. Is that what? Uh oh, right there, right there, the New, Jer- New Jersey Corporation. Oh, all <laughs> near right. New Jersey Corporation. Good news. Yes. Well, yes, but hey, we will I, welcome you. We will <laughs> welcome you. Yeah, but what I love about the treaty, I mean, I, I was right there from day one with the class. So I, matter of fact, the day sisters came online, I was like so happy. But um, with this <laughs> treaty, I realized as well that any questions or doubt we had, even though we know that Constitution was to keep the other citizens to uh, keep them in place and enforce that law, and only uh, actually Article 6 and 4 would apply to us because of every state is supposed to be a republic and then the, uh, all the, um, um, all the, uh, tre- all the um, obligations that they would do before the signing of that treaty. But uh, the, this, peace, this treaty of peace and friendship, it, it, it clearly tells you who to, because if you don't, I think I'll, Issue with our sisters and brothers is all they don't they just refuse to believe their moors. They just mm. refuse to believe their moors. They think it's someone else. They think it's someone <laughs> else and not them. And once they get that in that head of theirs, that mind just push all that garbage away. That especially this religious stuff, man. They, I think it just. I think the ancestors will just drop on them. They, they're not even gonna sin. They're just gonna drop on them <laughs> because I know how it's yeah. my head gets my mind. On. Yes, yeah. well, when I when I realized who I was, I mean, I, I could just feel it's like all these different energies just it just came right up in me, and I'm like, and I haven't looked back since, and it's just no way not to know because with all these, I mean, I have every book that R V Bay has, I mean, the classes, the the the, the information now, and I, I know who to, and what, and nothing could deter me from. I'm like a horse with blinders on. I'm looking straight ahead. You can't, you can't distract me in either direction anymore. I know the truth <laughs> is who I am, and that's where I'm going. And anyone gets in my way, I'm gonna, it's going to be like X-ray vision. I'm just going to zap them with the truth. <laughs> that's, that's how I feel about. It. That's how strongly and that's how empowered I feel. And I'm, I'm, and I have some challenges when I get back up there, but I'm ready. I'm ready for them now. All right. right. Yeah. <laughs> well, you you might want to take someone else, but I want to interject something important about, and I wonder if somebody's going to bring it up where it says between the Moors and the Christian powers, because I want to clear that up. But my, my son told me something yesterday, and it hit me. I was like, wow, I had not thought about it. Um, but the prophet, the prophet Muhammad Ali said, we're giving Christianity back to the Christians because that was devised for their earthly salvation. And mm-hmm. brought to my attention, he said, so people get re- the whole, every time you say religion, the first thing they go to, especially our people because they've been Christianized, they, they're Christians, um, uh, a lot of them, the first thing they go to is being a Christian. So then when you say more than Christian powers, they get a little, like, confused about this, right? Like, oh, you're knocking my, you know, you're knocking my religion. But what was bought is this fine, fine thinking is that he didn't say he was give, that we should give religion back to anybody. He said the Christianity back to them who established it. You know, mm-hmm. their first church was in Rome, not the Holy Roman Empire, but under the Roman Empire. And so a lot of people... Without having that understanding, you know, they 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 think it's an attack on religion. That's not that's not so. So when they say Christian powers, these are these Europeans who claim to be Christian. Period. And then really, we talked about that before. That's Cretans, but you know, so we have to be able to discern that without looking at it and thinking that you know it's an attack on. Religion. It's not an attack on religion. It's an atta- mm-hmm. attack on the Christian power. It's just like you had the Christian crusaders. A lot of people get confused about the Christian crusaders and Christianity and being Christ-like and crystal clear and pure, which is really a sun ray. The Christ ray is the sun ray. So, again, truth and falsehood, strangely mixed. Mm-hmm. We have to be able to ferret this out to the divine truth. And that is why he said you need to know the truth. Yeah. And the divine truth, because in reality, all of these documents that we're looking at right now, they are really based in divine principles. There is nothing in the mm-hmm. Treaty of Peace and Friendship that 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 
that is untoward to anybody, whether they're under the Christian powers or not. Nothing. There's nothing in the Constitution that is untoward to anybody. You know? Islam. Yes. (laughs) Islam. Mm Mm-hmm. Islam. Islam. Uh, this is uh, again uh, Hassan Ghazi Obey. Is, is as you was reading uh, or speaking about that, uh, uh, Sister Raz. As far as the uh, Christian powers, I was read. I see that uh, Christian powers is uh, mentioned in uh, Article 10 as well as uh, Article 24. I was just briefly uh, perusing, but just on the the surface of it to get to I guess the root, so to speak. Um, the the surface of I guess the the Christianity yeah, uh, or, or the root of it. As well as uh, Article 24, I was just briefly uh, perusing. Oh, sorry, hold on. No, that's I was, fine. I, that, that, that was another person that wanted to join the conversation. 412-969, you're going to have to do something with that speaker because you're – I can't unmute you because you got terrible feedback. All right. All right. Go ahead, Doc. All righty. Um, and uh, I guess, well, in, in a little bit of study and tracing back to what Christian power means, so if, if I just artistically say Christian being the branch of the tree, its root being the uh, nice, uh, Niceno, Constantino, Pilate, and Creed of 325 A.D., of what it really is, which, which that is not uh, uh, designed for the Moabite Muslim family, so to speak. Um, so if, it, if that is uh, what, what we have is the would be what would be for lack of better words the Krishna creed, which is not the same thing at all as the as the Niceno creed of 325 A.D., which is full of bloodshed when we do really analyze it and read between the lines. But mm-hmm. but but at but at the same time, it it's it's um it, the treat the treaty of peace and friendship truly is beautiful. And one thing you guys had opened my my eyes to, so that I could further analyze. Uh, the difference in the, b- between us and the quote unquote Christian powers was in uh, Article 21, where uh, it says, uh, if any citizen of the United States should kill or wound a Moor, or mm-hmm. on the contrary, if a Moor shall kill or wound a citizen of the United States, the law of the country shall take place. And I'm going to stop right there. When you guys opened my eyes to the great law of peace, I instantly, I don't know if you guys remember, but I mm-hmm. sent the email to you guys when I found it, and I, was, and I read it, and I, had, I didn't get through the whole thing, but just the, I mean, you can go through like the first 53. I think that's where I stopped at, number 53. And I mean, just that alone is just like really, really beautiful, and it's like our ancestors are, were, and, and still is very intelligent on how they design um, these documentations for us to basically absorb in our spirit so that we can be able to demonstrate them without having to uh, uh, have the canvas of our mind be the Fruit Loop stuff that they that we've been indoctrinated with. So, so for posterity, for posterity, they were very eloquent. That's why we just need to enforce it. That's why the prophet said so. I agree. I bear, I bear witness. I bear witness. So so I will say, and not to be uh, too, vib- too verbose because I know there's other uh, family that would like to get in, but um, as far as that, when it comes to the Christian powers, because I do, I do like put a lot of context clues together with different things. So so really, at the end of the day, it, it they they're violating um, every part of what they've sworn, no matter who they are, principal of, or agent, uh, any corporate. Uh, a being, so to speak, or employee is violating the oath in which they've taken, and and in analyzing that oath alone to uphold the organic constitution, I'm saying organic constitution, that 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 specifically being ten bill of rights, seven articles, you 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 know, you know what I'm saying? So they they they're to uphold that. Now, when I look at the word organ, I think about me. I think about my body. So I look at myself as to be upheld, and if someone isn't upholding me because they're busy putting their foot on top of me, then they are in total, total abrogation and violation of international law. 
It's treason. It's death by hanging. The punishment for that, and what I've analyzed so far. You sound like Johnny when you said. But you know what? It doesn't matter whether they took an oath or they didn't take an oath. The glory of it is, it really doesn't matter. The glory of it is, is that it's the law of the land, regardless. Which is mm-hmm. also why the law of the land still stands. It still stands. It still stands whether they ever make a new law or whether a new law is ever made. It still stands. Mm-hmm. And the modern Europeans know, these other cities know that they can't alter it, but they have altered it and presented it uh, to people. But what they've altered is some other document that is not the organic constitution at all. And mm-hmm. people believe that it is because, uh huh, and they believe that it mm-hmm. that that you know that the constitution is weak, and they believe that the state's constitution is what they should go by. And the only reason they believe all of this crap is because they have not studied their own history and heritage, and they have no respect for what, as you said, the eloquency and the intelligence. And they're looking after it for posterity. They have not studied any of that for their own family. And so here you, it's proven because we have our own family breaking themselves up into pieces, talking about, talking about starting a new government without knowledge that this is our government. <laughs> because family, society starts uh, with family, so does the authority of the government. So when you said organs and you know, when you talk about government, means governing the mental, and, 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 and believe me, that document was written to keep these other citizens from molesting the family, but the family wants to be dived up all into that and try to, even trying to correct them in their documentation, which means jack to us. What means something to us is the treaty, which precedes mm-hmm. the Constitution. We should be diving into that as a nation. Exactly. All right. Um, exactly. And did Obama? Um, Obama was it Obama ahead, who said that? Um, was it Obama who said that this country wasn't founded on Christian powers or yes, Christian authority? Absolutely. Like yes, that. It's in the car. Uh, yep, we have it in Obama's speech in Cairo, Egypt. He did say it because he knows it. <laughs> Islam, I, I, I have what he said, if you guys don't mind me uh, going to. I have the annals of Congress right here. It's Hassan Ghazi Obey one more time. And the part that he read, Article 11, as the party, I'm sorry, as the government of the United States of America is not in any sense founded on the Christian religion, as it has itself no character of enmity, I'm sorry, enmity against the laws, religion, and tranquility of Muslims, that is us, and as the said states never entered into any war or act of hostility against any Mohammedan nation, us again, it is declared by the parties that no pretext arising from religious opinion shall ever produce an interruption of the harmony, peace, friendship, existing between the two countries, Islam. Islam, thank you, Brother Ghazi. That was wonderful. Yeah. That was wonderful. Mm-hmm. I just want to make, I just want to interject something right, right here, because I know a lot of people, myself included, we all um, have been naming the Union States as a party or the attacker or the one that has been violating our liberties, and I just want everyone to be clear and do your research. I'm not just telling you just to tell you. I'm telling you for you to also do your research so that you will know. No union states directly have been molesting the people. Right? right? None. Right. None. It has all been private foreign corporations. These counties, city, town, township, boroughs, they are all corporations. Many of them were uh, established by Great Britain, Spain, Portuguese, Portugal. Some of them were established initially on the uh, north east coast by um or is it northwest? Northeast coast. They were established by the Dutch and Great Britain took them over. 
these are all corporations, all right? Now, um, the reason that we do not get any remedy is because we are constantly wallowing around in these corporation, corporate uh, venues. Now, they don't have a court. They don't have a court. And just because they sent a paper saying um, come to court. Now, people need to understand what a court is and what a court is not. You need to understand anybody can go and rent a room in that building and send out an invitation. That is what they're doing. They're doing that because they know they can. Now, yep. you might be, well, they're going to do, I, and I get so sick and tired of hearing people say, well, they're going to do what they do. The reason they're doing what they're doing is because they indoctrinated us, because they are mm-hmm. also the same people that established these schools, so-called schools. This is a business decision for them. They figured out a way to submit a request for money and or a grant. They give the appearance of providing a service. They are providing a service because we do not. Now, we don't do it, we talk about it, but we don't never do it. And unfortunately, you know, until the sisters get on board, ain't going to ever do nothing because Action takes place when the sisters join in. Talking wow. is all that's going to happen until the sisters join in. Because the sisters are going to put down all the details. Where do we want? Do we got a building? Let's get a building. Let's, um, another sister, will, they'll write up the request. Another sister will make sure that all of the pieces, all of the exhibits and everything will go to that. And then they, another sister will start the curriculum, maybe in conjunction with a brother. And then they will, they will put a date as to when the school will open, and they'll start drafting up um, um, invitations to other families. You know, do you want, would you like, this is an invitation for your child to come and participate in the educational forum that we are establishing, blah, 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 blah. Because you don't want to use wrong words, but we ain't, we're not, we're not really, we're not really educating anybody. Everybody mm-hmm. knows everything. Ain't nothing new under the sun for real. That's the reason that is a saying is because nothing is new. We are all the ancestors return. That's all we need is a forum that's going to allow us to bring the information up from inside of us. Now, the majority of that is supposed to happen in the womb, but if it doesn't, it can happen in the first three to five years of the child's life. So we need to create an environment so that that can happen. We can do yeah. that. We can do that. We can do the same thing because these people are running a business. Mm-hmm. So we need to. We need to. We're not running a bit. We're running a business of enabling our nation. We're not running a business to feed off of our nation. Well, we need to understand business. It means busyness. It means busyness. That's what it means. Yeah. It's not commercial. It means busyness. Exactly. We are busy. <laughs> we should all be busy, you know, exactly. about our business. <laughs> but, 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 but this is this is all. It's not difficult, really. It's not. If I knew back a hmm, couple years, a couple, couple years, like twenty, thirty years ago, forty years ago. <laughs> If I knew 40 years ago what I know today, I would have established a school. I would have, but see, here's the beauty of a school or institution of remembering. Because I wouldn't want to call it a school because that's not what's happening. I would probably call it an institution of remembering. The beauty of that type of an endeavor is the, the, the purpose of that is for the family to be involved. So somebody can stab, somebody can get the ball rolling, but they don't have to have the ball and chain around their neck. And that's, mm-hmm. that's, that's the lesson that we learned from our brothers and sisters over in what they today call the Middle East, all right? 
every last one of them knows the same thing. So if you take out one, somebody else will pop up and continue the movement because well, everybody knows the same thing. We need to do that. That is supposed that's to be all a part that's of also our in astrology. Exactly. That's also that's a supposed supposed to be from astrology. The 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 cardinals in the cardinal signs uh, which start season start things. The fixed signs, which is the epitome of the season, uh, are supervised. And then the mutable signs, where things are changing out, they are absolutely workers, behind the scene or 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 not. You know, whether they're behind the scene or in the front, they don't it don't matter. So that's how it's done. That's and that's and that's also why why the scriptures say, "Man, know thyself, so you can know your place." When and when, whenever the project is starting, somebody's going to take on a role that's not even fitting for them and exactly. they wonder why it's not falling the way that they want it to. And, um, right. yeah, and then also with, with family over here, like Annie e was saying, if people would just um, not try to do it for the sake of um, robbing or um you know, just um, sucking our people with their money and stuff like that. There's some and just back. You got feedback, sister. I think you got feedback. I don't no, know. No, that's, that's somebody else. Somebody oh, yeah, that is. Oh, okay. All right, all right. And so, um, yeah, so I was saying that if, if our people were to start trying to do stuff, Without trying to rob the people and take the finances and just kind of, you know, in the, in the, in the, I want to say, I don't want to say, the European like mindset where you're just doing it for commerce and not just for uplifting the uh, family as a whole, then we'll probably get somewhere. But, uh, you know, the, yeah. Yes, exactly. But, you know, first, first we have to recognize we are one family. Now, and that's exactly it takes two months. It's very daunting in a way, but you know, like we said, we do what we do today for tomorrow, um, because it, it it will get here in that it's in the generations, it's for the young and yet unborn, um, which really is for us in the end, because there really is no end. You know what I mean? So, but um, uh, I don't know if there's someone else. So oh, shoot. Is there, was there um, someone else? Father, that, I, I heard a brother trying to speak. I don't know if he's the one giving the feedback. I heard no, I'm, I'm not. Uh, call not it, call it two five, five six three two zero. I muted you, and the feedback went away. I don't know if oh, the feedback. No, I'm here. All right. All right. Can you hear hey, hey, yes. Yes, I can, sister. It's my day. Um, I, I did have something that I noticed. I remember uh, you all bringing up the Articles of Association, and I get excited when you talk about new things because I actually did print it out. And um, yeah. something that really, really stood out with with me, uh, especially being really, really new to this information, I would hear Tosh say all the time, you're standing on Morocco, and I'd be like, what? What does that mean? Well, again, you know, I had to study uh, in the Treaties of Peace and Friendship. I would say the very first page where it said Treaties of Peace and Friendship between Morocco and the United States proved to me that we were standing on Morocco. Now, the other thing that stood out when you look at the Articles of Association is, you know, for years I would always wonder, like, why the modern European was so... Uh, how do you say, like, uh, this is mine, you know, or, you know, I'm American, or I'm this or that. And I guess, you know, when I saw this, it, it helped me to understand kind of like why they're in that mindset. Well, when you go before the Peace of Peace and Friendship, because this was October 20th, 1774, it says they had to avow their allegiance. Yeah, to be over here to do whatever it is they wanted to do. And when you look at the you think that obligation of fidelity and obedience to government in consideration for protection that that government gives because we know our brothers were, you know, snatching people up and, you know, we had to calm everything down from the little bit that I understand. So I'm really, really seeing it in a different perspective now when I look at them um, because – 
really back then, you know how we say that there are certain things in our DNA from our ancestors? Well, probably, and, and you all can definitely elaborate on this, in their DNA they understand that they are visiting and that they owe their allegiance and that they have to claim, yes. you know, the yes. land or their obedience to the land. So I, I was, you know, I can definitely yield the floor and see what you guys well, think about that. That hit me. Well, it's not, you know, you're, you're absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. But he, and I want to say two things, and a lot of people miss this. But uh, uh, some of us, when we were in school, there was that pledge of allegiance. There was that pledging of allegiance. That no yeah. longer happens in the school. But if you pay attention to that pledging of allegiance, the, I pledge allegiance to the United States of America. That was never, you know, it's funny because when I was in school, I never felt comfortable saying that, even as a child. So I never did. But yeah. that this allegiance. Is I pledge allegiance to the United States of America and to the Republic because for which it stands. For which it stands. One Nation, undivisible, in liberty, with justice and liberty for all. That's the allegiance. They had to pledge that. They had to pledge that to be here. All right? Yes. When they signed that treaty of peace and friendship and the Constitution, they was brought into government. They, brought mm-hmm. in, they were brought into our government in order to participate. That's why they have a Republican form of government because a Republican, a Republic or a Republican form of government is one where you have representation. They can't come to the table and talk. We they, we got to represent them. This is our That's damn table. That's they can right. send oh. delegates, but they can't that come why to the two table presidents? by themselves. Excuse me? And that's why there's two presidents in the Constitution. Exactly. The president of the United exactly. States, which is which is our interface arm, um, and then the president of the United States of America. Too many people miss that, and, you know, they think that, I don't know, go ahead, to finish because it's so important. The, other point, bring the second so point, important. This, is, this is so, uh, sister, I'm so glad you said that because I keep telling <laughs> people go look at, Go and look at the climate of 1774, and you will see what was going on. Now, the second point that I want to make is the prophet said, enforce the damn Constitution. And my brothers and sisters, or my, my sisters and my sons, enforce the damn Constitution. Because <laughs> Article 6, is it Article 6? Article 6 says that the Constitution is in effect and all treaties and contracts that were enacted prior to it, which means the damn Articles of Association is in effect as well. So, so now you mentioned that, though. 1774, that's what, yeah, exactly. that's what to it. Exactly, and that's what, they, exactly. So now, when you read the Articles of Association, which said that they had to make a pledge in order to get to this soil to live free, today, 2016, laws across the nation ought to be enforcing that damn Constitution because wrapped up in that Constitution is the Treaty of Peace and Friendship, the Articles of Association, the Articles of um, Confederation, and the Declaration of Independence. They all are in force together. Not one cancels out the other. That's why the prophet says study, 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 because you don't know what you got your hands on. But if you study and you read all the documents and you put them all together, you get a full picture. You know, you get an inkling of just how much power you have. Now sit your ass down and enforce the Constitution. Not UCCs, not some birth certificate bullshit, all right? Because the right. Constitution, if it is enforced, will nip all that bullshit about birth certificate in the bud because it's human trafficking, which means now you're talking about world court. You're talking about genocide. So all of these people running, I need me a certified copy, registered copy of my birth certificate. You're just <laughs> participating in genocide, and they're going to take your ass to the world court because you're participating in the fraud. Wow. Enforce the damn wow. Constitution and lead them out of Europeans with their fraudulent documents. 
It's wow. Who that? I like to interject. It's Brother Hassan, guys. He obey not to cut the mother's wisdom, but you just gave me a revelation when the sister had brought up about pledging. And, and, and this is what I'm thinking. This is our house. If this is our house, why would we pledge to what we come from, which what we descend from? It seems like the pledging would be for those that are foreigners and or wards that would have to pledge to something that they don't they don't come from. So that, that's all I just wanted to interject, just to correlate well, that Islam. Well, that, that's, pr- that's pretty clear. That's pretty clear because it says, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. That means it's standing under under republic. Um, mm. uh, um, uh, indivisible, right? So that means mm-hmm. it's two things that cannot be separated. So now th- it's right there. It's just right there, so you're absolutely correct. Now, the reason, well, I don't know what the reason is, but the the way they're thinking now, and it's only because we, the people, the the, the Aboriginal Indigenous people, the National Jewish Land, the Moors, have not enforced Jack. And so they're like, well, okay, we got our foot in the door here. Let's keep going. We're going to take this whole thing. And so you, in fact, you got people more thinking that these people are actually government. That, they, you know, it's crazy. It's like, oh, we got to come out of the Constitution and go back in. When the Constitution was established, we were on the other side of that. Why do we, we don't have to go get in and come back and all that crap. The Constitution wasn't written for that. So what Constitution are these people talking about? Because they sure aren't talking about uh you know, the American National Republic Constitution, they can't be talking about that and call themselves a mob. They can't be. So mm. this is a miseducation um, or misstudy that they have. So, you know, I, you know. I, I guess just wanted to add. Oh, I'm sorry. I just no. wanted to add that, yes, when y'all say enforce to the family, uh, enforce etymologically denotes strengthen. Strengthen, strengthen the Constitution. Thank you. And everybody is strengthening everything else we're trying to, except yes. for that which, which is solid. It's crazy. Yes. Yeah. And you know what? And, and, and even if our people want to still act like they're not family, well, still enforce the law of the land. You're on this land. But no, they want to go and create a new nation. They want to go and create a new flag. They want to go and create, you know, go into the United Nations. We need to get a seat. That's another thing. At the United Nations. For what? The United Nations has already recognized that your Aboriginal and Indigenous have the right to do or uh, establish your own identity and must be respected and a whole host of other things that is already uh, acknowledged, not that they or affirm, affirm, because it is what it is. But now we're running around, we're going to get a seat in the United Nations. What the heck is that all about? Oh we don't need goodness. lack of study. That's what that's about. Lack of study. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it's about. Because look, you know, and and here's the thing. Years ago, I was asked to come to the United Nations because there was supposed to be this meeting. Now, me and my naive self, I thought that it was a meeting just with the Moors. It wasn't. It was with. It was at the time they was calling it all a uh, uh, all women a women's indigenous forum. It was just with indigenous women. I don't know what that meant because we didn't make it. But my question was, okay, what if we had made it? What was what were we gonna put on the table in terms of what was relevant for our family? And do you know, just like Hillary said to the Black Lives Matters people, ask them if they have an agenda. Guess what? Nobody had an agenda. Exactly. Nobody. Our people, they always want to go, but they don't never have an agenda. What what you going to talk about if you don't have an agenda? You don't. What 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 is important to us as a people? What is our top five priorities? You know, and and of those five. What do we want to see happening right now? Love. Nobody knows. Well, that's Nobody interesting, Annie, because just a few years ago, a sister called me and said, uh, this is not the same one you're talking about, going to the United Nations in reference to rights of, uh, you know, the indigenous people. And I said, well, what's, what's the agenda? 
what, 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 what it's about. So when she started naming some of the things, I said, open up the Rights of Indigenous People book. It's already established. <laughs> I mean, really. So what that meant is, now here's the crazy part. They're going to the United Nations to discuss things with the United Nations that have already been affirmed by whoever they are at the United Nations. And the sad part was they hadn't even, they're going to discuss the rights of indigenous people, but they hadn't even read the rights of indigenous the people. Rights of indigenous so people. everything they were going to discuss was already established. Already and discussed, and a decision had already been made. You know what? I, I have to say this because, you know, again, our biggest challenge as a people is, number one, we we do not identify the proper party. That is the biggest one of the most the biggest problem we as a people have. We do not identify the proper parties. We really don't even seem to know who's attacking us even while they're attacking us. I mean really, that's the biggest problem. The second challenge that we have is we we uh, a lot of Moors well, let me not say a lot of Moors. Let me just say there are Moors out there who do not comprehend that that American Constitution is ours. The government that is running, you know, uh, um, minus the altered uh, titles, that's ours, right? I have more than that we think that down the reason. Exactly. Now, here's the thing. The minute you you discount the American Constitution, which is ours, you discount the Treaty of Peace and Friendship, the Articles yes. of Confederation, yes. the Articles of Association, yes. the Declaration of Independence, don't apply to us, but it's important in the scope of things because, as the sister said, in the Articles of Association, it was clear they had to make a pledge. That's 1774. In 1776, they made the pledge. That's the That's Declaration right. of Independence. Right? Now, yeah. after the pledge was made, then we get the Treaty uh, of the Articles of Confederation. It's the precursor to bringing them into law proper. Um, right. Yep. That's about eight then, years. Mm-hmm. Right? Then we have mm-hmm. the Treaty of Peace and Friendship. And if you read... The documentation on the RV Bates Publications website, they wanted to have a treaty of peace and friendship. That was in 1780. They said, look, uh, look, look, uh, you know, we down with you, but we can't talk about the treaty of peace and friendship at this stage because your pledge where you're changing your allegiance has not been acknowledged. And to have a conversation about what a treaty commerce. is like, well, no, it was commerce. They wanted it to. Treaty of, of commerce treaty of prior to commerce. getting a treaty right. of peace right. and prior to getting the acknowledgement from the brutish Moors that they acknowledge their uh, declaration to be independent. That's wild. Exactly, exactly. So now, right. and, and if this is right out of the congressional record where they uh, the Moors, now, because you got to know who is who and what is what. It wasn't no damn modern Europeans over here prior to um, uh, 50, what is it? Uh, the, uh, was it 16, well, they were slaves. Right, 1640, there was slaves. no, exactly. They were slaves. So they didn't have any, they couldn't even speak, all right? So now, the, it, clearly, the, 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 and, and I can tell you, there's a treaty between Morocco and Great Britain, that's how come. Um, the Duke of York was able to come over here in 1664. <laughs> now, because of the disharmony between the Brutish Moors and the slaves, the Slavics, the serfs, the modern Europeans, erroneously called white people today because of misinformation, all right, they decided to sever their ties. They could only do that if they had this body of water between them or... They had the, the the guaranteed protection of another nation equal or greater to the uh, great the brutish Moors. The only way they were able to be be so 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 presumptuous as to think that they can sever their ties with Great Britain and be independent and engage in commerce 
in somebody else's house as if they already knew from the people who own the damn house that they was going to be protected. Yeah. So, so now before we get to the Treaty of Peace and Friendship, they didn't even acknowledge in 1780 that their changing of allegiance had been acknowledged, and that's why our family said, look, uh, we can't talk about no Treaty of Peace and Commerce, and to, and to do so would be, it, what did they say? To be solicitous about a treaty of commerce before peace is established is like busy is like being busy about furnishing our house before the foundation is laid. Now that's the eloquency. That is the eloquent. That's why the prophet said you got to speak in an in an intelligent tone because right there is the eloquency of how we used to put people in their place and we didn't have to cuss. It's All right, <laughs> but they got the message. So now when you look at the Treaty of Peace and Friendship, the precursor to that was the Declaration of Independence. You can't talk about treaty where we're going to put our lives on the line to protect you. If you ain't going to pledge your allegiance to me, I don't think so. You could take it behind right back to Great Britain and, and, you know, take your chances back there. So now once you and have the Treaty of Peace and on. But the war was going on. They mentioned that too. What war? The war that where the British wanted to keep them as slaves. That's what war. Exactly. We think it was us that were the slaves. It was not. Oh my God! Yes. The, 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 and so the important the importance of knowing what's happening. The, chron- the, the, the that Constitution is so vital to the history of not just the Moors but the modern Europeans. And the minute that you get some stupid behind more who on top of oh, the Constitution was suspended, my son, do you know what you just said? Do you know the magnitude of what you just said? Apparently not. You need to go study. Because what you just said is that these modern Europeans, they pledge, even in their pledging of allegiance, they pledge their allegiance. They continually pledge their allegiance. All right? Now, why is that important in terms of the Treaty of Peace and Friendship? Because if they renege on that pledge, we need to slam them with the Treaty of Peace and Friendship and that American Constitution. That's what it's there for. And if you don't know who is who and what is what, let's bring in the Articles of Association so we can see who was here, who came here, and who pledged to do what. Yeah, you don't know what your pledge is? Let me pull out your Declaration of Independence, okay? I, I can remember it now. <laughs> I got it right here. I can read it for you if you would like it. Which no, part of the Declaration no, 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 you would no. like me to read? No, he don't want to read the whole thing. No, <laughs> no, because see, the pl- it's there. It's there, and that's what's important. It is there. If you read the Declaration of Independence, you will see who the damn slaves are. But the problem with our people is that these modern Europeans, they have, uh, they have put in a request to provide a service. That service is to educate the people that come into the institution, and they do. They do educate them, but they don't educate them on the who is who and what is what. It, yeah. it said educate them. It, it didn't say educate them on what. It said educate them, all right? So now that's on us because the same ability that these modern Europeans have to to petition the federal government because they can't hold that back. They cannot hold it back. You want to know how come they can't hold it back? Read the rights of indigenous people. That finance comes straight down from the international financial, financial institutions for the Moors. Why no more is petitioning so that they can build our institutions of remembering and get our children out of these institutions of forgetting? Okay, why are we not doing that? Because we don't know. And the sad thing is, up 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 around this area, you got some um, unconscious moors who feel like they did something because they established a school, an institution, and they gave it some Afrocentric name. But the children, the children come to the institution wearing uniforms, not even a piece of kente cloth in the damn uniform, not even one little piece of kente cloth. 
and the damn uniform, and the curriculum is still a modern European curriculum. What have they done? Nothing. Well, you know what that's interesting because <laughs> I know I have mentioned this before, but I was on one of the uh, one of the first uh, one of the founders of the charter school, and when we went to, and then of course on the board, when we went to discuss teaching our at that time, I didn't know anything about Moorish scientific history. But so we called it to teach our African history or African dash American history. Uh, there was people who looked, who were Moors who felt it wouldn't be fair because I mean most of the students were Moors. We're the one. No European was on the board or established it. But uh, there was a couple of couple. Not when I say a couple, I mean like two, maybe three, in the school, and a more assistant felt uncomfortable about us teaching about our history and our supposed charter school for our children. So, of course, that mm. was when I was like, okay, I'm out of here. <laughs> I mean, really, you got to be kidding me. And this only comes because, you know, it's not that there's any prejudice or uh, hate or anything like that against or towards modern Europeans. They have to learn their history proper just as we do. Um, um, it's just that who is who and what is what is a necessity because we've always been viewed as this downtrodden, you know, like we got peeled off the wall somewhere, you know, whatever like that, and, and, and that's how we are here on our ancestral estate. That doesn't even doesn't even make sense. And so it's just that we have to, everyone has to know the truth, you know, so that our children won't be feeling as they do. I mean, they've got programs every year for the betterment of the Negro child and all this little craziness as if they have no history, no heritage. And the fact of the matter is we're the mothers and fathers of civilization on the entire planet, on all mm-hmm. four corners of the earth. So wait, you know, like the, the, the problem is, is that we've been indoctrinated and we feel like we want to, appease and please the the modern European, what we call the white man, and, you know, we we think that they're government, we think that they're authority, and they're, like, laughing all the way to the bank because they know that the reason they start their history when they teach it uh, only 300 years ago is because that's when they got some freedom from being a slave. So they know the, the the truth about our history, but they're not teaching that. That's not what their agenda mm-hmm. is. No. Nope. And so it's crazy, you know. It's, 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 it's wrong. Crazy. It's wrong. Not not to cut the the mother's wisdom, but y'all giving me another revelation as far as speaking to other uh, individuals that have already, I mean, other brothers and sisters that have had this information but are not really running the temples and schools. Um, and, it, and it brings up two uh, things of scripture, and then, then I wanted to, I'm just going to say briefly to add to that. One, uh, part of scripture uh, in the Bibliotelioteca, it, it says that uh, it is, said that Yeshua says that there is a uh, spirit that will come after me that will teach you and remind you of all things. That's one thing. The second thing is it thinks I think of the prodigal son when you think of our brothers and sisters that are thinking, hmm, let me let me get a position like the servants in my father's house. Yeah, that's how I'll be able to get back in so that I can join the music and the party and get a ring on my finger and sandals on my feet like my brother who didn't do anything else. All he did was just stay home and study. But I went out here and had this riotous living because I didn't follow what Prophet Noble Drew Ali prescribed. So now I'm thinking, what's another way I can come through the back door by trying to get along with my oppressors? That my father has hired. Yeah. So well, so so so, so to son, I'm. No, I hear what you're saying, but the so, prodigal son, you okay. got to understand that that's the S-U-N, not S-O-N. Right. Right. And that son is coming, and it's burning up some people right. that cannot live on the surface of this earth. We'll have to go underground, as it says in the scriptures, back into the caves they shall go. All right, because they're not going to be able to sustain. And neither some mm-hmm. of us, you know, based on how we eat or how poorly we poison ourselves with, you know, food or whatever like that. And but, how we uh, think. That's really, yes. Well, really, man is mine, so it's how we think, yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. 
So, you know, this document, you know, the Treaty of Peace and Friendship, the American Constitution, man, that thing is hot. Uh, you know, I don't think we ever went through the Articles of Association because it really doesn't apply to us. Articles of Association no, really doesn't apply to us. And, um, you know, the, but, you know, what I... We, what what needs to happen is like like the sister said, people. In order for you to understand your history as the Aboriginal Indigenous people, Moors of this land, you got to read that. Uh, you got to read the Articles of Association. You got to read the um, Declaration of Independence. Because I'm gonna tell you. I found this document online a couple years ago. It might have been like 2010, 2009, somewhere around there. And I thought it was rather rather interesting because I'm always researching, finding something and reading it and analyzing it. And when I read it, um, it, it, it gave a little bit of a prehistory before the Declaration of Independence. And what was interesting is it referenced, it talked about how Abraham Lincoln uh, petitioned Russia to assist in the war. And in my mind, I'm thinking, what does Russia have to do with this? Now, remember, this was like 2009, 2010, and maybe two years, two or three years later, we found, I was able to find this, um, some, some conversation in the, Congressional record, and it lists Russia, Prussia, uh, um, uh, the American states, and something else as the dominion of the of the Emperor of Morocco. So I was like, oh, okay, so that, and, and when I when I when I saw that, I said, okay, so that's why. Russia was asked to assist because this is Morocco and Russia is a part of the dominions of Morocco. So when Lincoln needed help with the war, he asked Russia. Russia said, no problem. We will send troops to assist you, but you got to release the slaves. That's how the Declaration of Emancipation came about. But the sad thing is that most modern year, most Asiatic people, they think declared so called unconscious and unconscious, unconscious and conscious ones. They really think that the Emancipation Proclamation was written for us. It wasn't. It was not written for us. All right. There was a, a, um, the the Emancipation Proclamation that was written by Abraham Lincoln. They didn't publish that. That was the second Emancipation Proclamation, and that, if I'm not mistaken, was published after Lincoln passed. Before Lincoln passed, he wrote the Emancipation Proclamation, and it's got a line in there that speaks of those of African descent, and and then the rest of it is about about Negro-colored blacks. So you get so he's definitely not talking about us, but. You gotta know this. You gotta know who is who. You gotta know what is what. Because if you don't, then you will think that um, the the Declaration of Independence, in some convoluted way, applies to us. But we ain't the people that came over on the Mayflower or the Santa Maria. We were not the indentured servants that came out of the prisons of Great Britain. But guess what? Those are the people who celebrate Black History Month. Every February It's their history It's not ours Our history go way beyond Way beyond uh, um, Three, four hundred years Our history is It starts with Before the beginning of time Because there is no time That's why in the, in the Bible In the Bibliotheliotech And a lot of ancient text it talks about I am the Alpha and the Omega. Who do you think they're talking about? You're the beginning and the end, never ending. Then it says that, uh, you you know, I come to give you life everlasting. You can't die. That was well, one of the commandments. Know, 
the commandments from a low place is thou shalt not kill. That's for people who are functioning at the low, the lower, the low, um, the lower self. Thou shalt not kill. The higher self knows that you can't kill because your energy, energy can't be killed ever. Uh-huh. So what you just said in terms of the infinite and alpha and omega, it said in the um, chapter one. Uh, <clears throat> and the Holy Quran, one. It says, "Man is mine." I don't know if it's chapter one. Um, and there never was a time when man was not. If there was yes. a time when man would end, there would be a time when he would end. So, and then of course, you know, the finite mind cannot understand things that are infinite. So, you must know the truth and the divine truth. And it's really very interesting because. What it is saying is, I mean, what is being done right now is when you look at the history that you said, and I think the sister came on and said she realizes that, you know, they wanted a place. They wanted uh, they wanted to be somewhere. The only people that don't really have the ancestral estate. This does not always have to be adopted wherever they go. But they are operating in lower self because they are intended to kill. I mean, they are really literally killing people because they want to travel on the roads, which is the most restricted personal liberty. I mean, I mean, uh, personal liberty in, in its most restricted form to go to and fro. This is like it's a quiet war, just like the King Alpha said. They shoot situations yeah. now. How can they don't shoot guns? Well, they do now, but... Um, they shot these situations for generations. So the only reason why these situations are considered as, gun, as bullets, but they're not bullets, the situations, is because we hadn't studied, don't know who we are, don't know our history, and so we can fall for it. So so who who's violating the law? Of course they're violating the law. Anytime you go to exercise your right to travel, they want to make it, nowadays they want to make it a crime. You hear me? A crime to travel. Now, that's ridiculous. And the only reason they can get away with that is because they know that they have not informed us on what the what the law is. Not and and, and the other thing is, it's not even yeah, about what the law is. It really, really, it's who is the law. They're never going to inform the people on who is the law. But the people is the law, specifically the Aboriginal Indigenous people of this land. You are the law. Now, that don't mean you're supposed to be arrogant. That just means that you're supposed to know who the hell you are. True. Now, yeah. if they yeah. can continue to get people to think, oh, yeah, well, you know, Africa is, is over there on that landmass that they today identify as Africa. So if you want to go home, you want to go home. That's where you got to go. No. I'm standing on Africa. Yeah, and you know something I know else too. That. That's why we're dealing with this treaty because it is an international document, right? I mm-hmm. um, absolutely. And as we discover who we are and what is what and who is who, we have to recognize that our issues as Moors are national and international, not yes. county, not quasi national, which are what the the states are. Not quasi national, not municipal, which is what you know they arrest in your neighborhood, municipal uh, venues. None of that is really about what more issues uh, rest in or on. They rest in national and international. But we're fighting That's right. a local county. You know what I mean? Like like uh, the prophet said something about the government in which the government in which you live. Well, we need to identify the government in which we live. We're identifying the government as these modern Europeans, not yep. peeling back the veil to see that they're not running government; they're running a, they're a corporation. They're and one the sure way to know, right, is that a government protects and preserves the rights of the people, not violate them. Mm-hmm. So exactly. that right there is a no-brainer, right there. So that's not who they are. So we need to stop thinking that they are, or that they have any authority to be. Because they don't. So really look and see who are they. Like, we know that the Republic State uh, was dissolved in 1861, but we also know 10 years later 
approximately 10 years later, they all came back as the United States of America Corporation operating mm-hmm. and seeing, pretending that they're still government. That they are mm-hmm. government. That's what happened. So a lot of people will find the corporation papers that are held at Delaware, but they don't really get what that is. That's a name right. only. They're not the government. They're not That's government. Right. They're not even their own government because they're corporations. The government and the the law is already established, of which you know they're not even honoring that. And and earlier someone mentioned about the oath, and it was brought to my attention that the first act of Congress in terms of uh, putting together and bringing in them them the modern Europeans into government proper, government proper, and they was to take the oath. Well, and I had said, well, whether they took the oath or didn't, you know, the law of the land is the law of the land, which is absolutely true. But that's another thing. That's another thing. If, in fact, they are running as government, they will have that oath. The reason they don't give you the oath of uh, uh, either oath, either oath of office or the delegation of authority to be a court, is because they really just do not have it. They now, don't have it. That's why you ask for it. And now what they're going to do next, though, and even you know how they work now. They're not exactly all stupid. They know that we are have our heads in the sand, you know, where our ass is up in the air, right? So what they're going to do is create an oath, and, 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 and those who've been asking for it who don't really know what it is, and what it's supposed to look like and what it's supposed to say and what it's not supposed to say are going to accept it as an oath because yep. how, and that's what you you're didn't doing. know. And that's exactly what's happening. So they're providing it. You know, we have to put an end to the madness, really, and go back to, um, you know, the truth and the divine truth. <laughs> and I mean, Islam. Right Islam, mm-hmm. in, brief, in brief conjunction, I just wanted to interject in conclusion when you uh, was uh, in correlating the right to travel with the Treaty of Peace and Friendship, and I wanted to go to the driver's mm-hmm. license fraud page of RV Bay Publications where the family can uh, either download and or print the 13th Supreme Court law case uh, reports. And since this is mm-hmm. just the standard on law, I wanted to go to number 9 of the 13 where it says, and, and I wanted to also add where you are, for those that are using that commercial driver's license instrument, you are Mirandized. So I'm going to quote Miranda versus Arizona 384 U.S. 436 125, where rights secured by the Constitution are involved. There can be no rule making or legislation which would abrogate them. Islam, I yield the floor. Islam, now and um, I'm glad you brought that up. I'm glad you brought that up. Because we got to understand legislation. These Europeans that are run, these modern Europeans that are run under the United States of America, who are running uh, establishments that they call government, and who are saying to you that it's, it's the law, um, they have a legislative department that they call a legislative department in their respective or not respected constitution that they, that they alter all the time, Right. However, when they say legislation department, and we were talking about this the other day, they're not talking about legislating law. They're telling you they made it a law through their legislative department, but their legislative department does not does not have any authority of to, uh, to, to, to make a law. Because, you know, this is right in the Constitution that tells you how a law is made. Ain't none being made if you look at it, because it clearly says that in that, it's Article 2 where it describes that, that if Congress is going to send a deal, ain't nothing going on even if they do have a two-thirds votes Congress uh, that overrides the fact that maybe the president didn't want to pass the law. Even if they do get the two-thirds, nothing's going down if Congress is in seeing a deal. And mm-hmm. these are, this is the study part. Now, the legislative, that they call legislative, is not the legislative department that would uh, of, of the government, the branches of government that would that would make a law, but because they know we don't know jack, and we never even read the constitution, mm-hmm. uh, they they will say, well, it's a law uh, from our legislative department, so don't be fooled by that. And this is again, stop thinking they're government because they're not. Well, they're actually. Actors. You know what? I want to I want to interject something right there, right? Because they say 
<laughs> they say that they are the law. They say that they, this is the law, right? So mm-hmm. if you ask them, and this is, this, this is interesting now, this is, the men, this is the mental, this is just an example of the mental conditioning that we suffer under because it's just so in our face. They say, mm-hmm. yeah. for example, buckle up, it's the law. So now if you right. ask them, I don't care what union say, go ask them, can I have the law for it's the law, buckle up? Buckle up, it's the law. They're going to say, oh, that statute so-and-so. Well, hell, how does a statute get to be called the law? That's the law, right? Now, here's the other thing that people need to think about. We've got case law that says the American Constitution is the supreme law of the land. Now, they're calling it the law. They ain't calling it, they ain't saying the American Constitution is the supreme statute of the land. They didn't say it's the supreme uh, UCC code of the land It said mm-hmm. it is the supreme, supreme law, law of the, the land. land All right, right. Well, now we, have we know that that is the law Now so now when they say Click it or check it It's the law Okay can I say that law Oh statute the law. Law. <laughs> That's the law Well can you explain something Don't want to eat Because a lot of people are getting confused Because I'm going to tell you why uh, I mean I, I think I know how, what they might be getting confused about And we can clear this up Because a statute um, Is not a law A statute can be proposed And then be promulgated And then become law Such as what occurred With the constitution itself Because we put up on the site Right on the women standing on law And you pulled it right out of the congressional record Of the statute at law At large At large and those congressional records have side notes and footnotes on exactly what was meant by, like, for instance, the um, um, the one we have on about taxes pages where we took it out of the footnotes of the statutes at large, meaning it is explaining to you directly why Article 8, um, um, Section 1, what it exactly means when it comes to taxing. So we want to clear up because when people see statutes at large, they don't get that. We're presenting that these these were the statutes at large for everyone, and they were promulgated, whereas a statute that is not promulgated and made into law by the legislative branch is not a law. So I think that confuses them when they see the statutes at large. Yes. And I hope I explained that's, it properly. That's that, To me, I got it now. You know, and, it, and, I, and I'll say this. If somebody didn't get it, you need to study that a little more. Um, because, you know, here's the thing. You can go and look up the definition of statutes in the Black Law 4th Edition Dictionary, I, and it will I tell it right you here. exactly what a statute is. Now, people need to do that individually because, okay. you know, you, they need to do it so that they can know. That's you know, right. man does not know uh-huh. by being told. Hold on a minute. So, um, Rod, you have the controls. Hold on. I did. Oh no, I don't because yes. I didn't even go in. Oh my gosh. Oh, Jesus. Let, let, me, Jesus. let me go in. Oh. Give me a second. Yes. Uh, <laughs> are we? Thank you, family. Peace and love and happy new year. <laughs> Islam. Thank you. Oh, yeah, Islam. Oh, uh, let me get. Let me get your. Islam. Let me get your, Islam. Is you guys hear me? Yeah. Oh, yes, Islam. You this is the J. I wanted to make a, a quick comment uh, earlier, but everybody, this is about um, you guys were talking about uh, people taking oaths, justice, taking oaths and everything, and um, and about them being a, a business. Um, I myself, mm-hmm. in, um, in the area where I am at, I I was uh, looking up just some of the uh, the judges and the courts and systems and everything. And I had came across this business that was in the um, the state, the state secretary site, the um, the secretary of state. They have the site where you can look up the corporations. And uh-huh. so it was a business I just found, and it was actually a it was called the Judges Business or Judge Association in this area. And they like it was like a business, and basically they had made it like a charity, and and, and it had wrote out the outlines of the business. Now, this is the judges, and this is like uh, it was for a common judge and just regular where people go to court and they think it's, you know, they're going 
real court and it's not real court because they actually had an outline about how they ran their business, how they actually got their money, and how it was like charity and how they was doing something for the people. Um, and I'm just like, wow, it just blew my mind how they just literally said it right there in their document that this is this, this is their business. Mm-hmm. That this is right. their business, and, yes. and they're doing taking charity. They're, they said that the money that they get from the people when they have to pay court fines, it was a charity, and that was a donation from that's us, right. and we don't get that's right. money. I was like, what? And that, that's, that's what right. made me switch as far as knowing that they were not court, they were not law. They then themselves said they were a, a uh, they were a company, a corporation, and they and they um. They uh, registered their business in the state, the Secretary of State online, and they said exactly what they did and how they got their finances. And they actually get funded, and they get extra money, too, because they're they're doing a yep. charity to the people. They're providing a service. Yep. I told you, yes. you are so absolutely correct. And, and they classify it as a donation, a gift, because here's the thing. We as Moors, we like to say ignorance of the law is no excuse. And then we turn around and we act like, well, that applies to the modern Europeans, but not us. No, that's for everybody. You're supposed yeah. to know the difference between a statute and the law. And if you don't and you're giving up income, that's called a gift. Wow. You know what's interesting? She brought up about court and about how they set up because um, – this information, I think um, Dave had gave to me a while ago, and I, I put it in in this document that I'm doing or this book that I'm doing, and it's and basically <laughs> the people of the state of New York represented in the Senate. This is I don't know how to date. I got to get the date. Um, represented in Senate and Assembly and acted in their consolidated judiciary law in relation to the administration of justice as it relates to court and judges. The following article, and check this out. The use of the term court is prohibited. No person firms traditional corporate. Somebody's dragging, somebody's scraping really bad. Uh, person firm association, it might be. Corporation shall hereafter use or employ the term court as part of or in connection with the same name of any body, board, bureau, association, organization, or corporation, or in referring to any body, board, bureau, association, organization, or corporation, in such manner as to be calculated reasonably to lead to the belief that the body, board, Bureau, association, organization, or corporation is vested with judicial power or is a part of the judicial system of this state. The use of such term being expressly limited by this section for reference to a court of record or a court not of record, duly organized and and existing under the laws of the state as part of the judicial system of the state. Any violation of this section shall be a misdemeanor. So that means that they are impersonating officers of a court. They're even calling their association, bureau, uh, organization, corporation a court, and it's a misdemeanor to do so because without having a best, without being vested with judicial power, which is the delegation of authority. They cannot use or call their, whatever they're doing, their bureau, body, association, board, organization, or corporation a court. Now, guess what? That is exactly what they have done. They're not courts. Now, is there anyone else on, i got to get back to, here we go. Is there anyone else that has any comments towards... I guess if nobody yeah. else was going to say anything, I guess I could. It's, it's her son. Oh, I thought y'all oh, was about to close me. out. Can you uh, hear yeah, me? Hold on, Gazi. Hold on, Gazi. This is sister. Okay. Let me just let her pass. It's yes, fine. sister. Yes, I wanted to mention that um, when we said the um, – oh, I, shall I identify myself? Felicia. <laughs> yeah, that would be I, good. <laughs> all right. I needed to say that um, when we mentioned about our schools and – um, saying the Pledge of Allegiance, um, yeah. we apl- we're supposed to pl- 
pledge allegiance to the flag, not the banner. Correct. But Correct. see, the true flag, the true flag even of the United States of America is the American flag, which is the Moroccan flag. That's the trick yes. there. Because their th- thanks for bringing that up, because their banner, the one that right now everybody calls the American flag, they need to yes. shut up their mouth with that because that is a banner as was described in the song itself called the Star Spangled Banner, and as was directed when we uh, did the Treaty of Peace and Friendship, they were to create a banner that would be on the ships that they were allowed to pass through the ports on so that we would allow them to pass. That was the banner then. It's a banner now. And um, it would be called the ensign, E-N-S-I-G-N. But it is not a flag of the people, because remember, it's one nation indivisible, um, and with liberty and justice for all. So there's two, two two things coming together. So I'm glad that you mentioned that. That's very important. Very important. That and so here we are, all going around. And see, this is why I think the prophet said we need to have our own schools, because yeah. they're in their schools, right? Pledging allegiance, right? Um, but they got the banner up there. We need to recognize that both flags need to be up. Well, I'm sorry, the American flag needs to be up and the banner. Because, right, because there's only two things going on, and that's that, the eagle seal, and the pyramid seal. Mm -hmm. And a flag is a flag of the people. So so that's a good point that you you brought up. Thank you for that. Indeed. I, I just mm-hmm. wanted to, if you don't mind, I wanted to interject briefly. I, I'm not because I want to make sure that I follow uh, uh, the instructions of Mother Anna E. by not reading directly what statute is at all. I won't. To entice the family, it is page 1581 in the Black Law <laughs> Fourth Edition. So <laughs> no, I'm not going to read it. This is what I found out, though, that I thought was pretty because there was one time, it was another broadcast last week, or maybe two weeks ago, and Sister Anna E was uh, reading the um, the Latin, and and that was what sparked me off because uh, in, the, in the Baltimore Corporation they do have one of those institutions called Roland Park Middle School, uh, and they taught a lot of Latin there. So I, and I got that a lot of that Latin, and and there's something beautiful where it says Statuta Pro Publico Comodo Latte Interpretantur. Statutes made for the public good ought to be lib- uh, liberally construed. And then directly after that, statua suo clunduntur territorio nec ultra territorium disponunt. Statutes are confined to their own territory and have no extraterrestrial effect. Woodworth, uh, wow. Woodworth versus Spring. For Allen, Massachusetts, 324. I yield the floor. Peace and love. Wow. Islam. See, now that's wonderful because when we go back to the traveling or the passing um, with the treaty with the passing of ships um, and then the traveling upon the land, the liberty, the personal liberty, uh, if they want to make, okay, if they want to make a statue for their corporation, because that's what all they really have done, um, and they want the members slash citizens, because members and citizens mean the same thing, to follow that, then that is uh, their choice to do so, and that's what they want to do. You understand what I'm saying? But we Indeed. need to recognize that it is not meant for the natural people, period. But because we and think that they are... Yes, is that, is that you and me? Yeah, all yeah. right. Because also, we think that they are the law, we think that whatever they do for their corporations, statutes, policies, and codes, uh, we think that that is meant for us. And that's why we gave the people the definition of the police, which is on the site, on the driver's license fraud. It says that they're not there to protect the people, they're there to protect corporations and to arrest code breakers. So they're not talking mm-hmm. about law. So where do we get that these police are law enforcers if it says right there in the, the definition that they're, they're dealing with code, 
codes are not law. And, and Wait a minute. On some, they, on some of they, on some of they, uh, on some of their vehicles now, they actually add code enforcement. Now, that's, right. that's true. Yeah, that's true. it's like, a code enforcement. Right. I was like, wow, I took a picture of it. I'm like, wow, they're not telling the people what's up. I, I but, you know what? If they can be that blatant, Sister Gianna, and the people still don't get it, it's only because the people have not studied to know that what mm-hmm. the law is and what their inalienable, unalienable rights from birth. That means by sheerly being born and breathing, you have certain unalienable, inalienable rights. At birth, and so how? Who is someone else to want to, sm- you know, smother you out from your birth? Because that's what they're doing, you know. And it's interesting. It's interesting because cold enforcement. I always knew as, and you know, I can think of it differently now that you read that. I always knew as the codes of the municipalities in terms of their codes, where it it deals with buildings and stuff. You know, like what yep. you can do. Yeah, that's what that's what I thought. But, I mean, you have brought forth that. Look at this. Police yep. are there. Police mean to protect the corporation. And you said, look, they got Amtrak police. We saw the car the other day. They yep. actually have Amtrak police. What does that have to do with you? Yes, the Amtrak police mm-hmm. and the transportation, the subway police, you are allowing them to accost you? Hmm. Yeah. It's crazy. That's that mental conditioning. They and see, the problem with well, a problem with a lot of morts is they. It's like they they they're afraid, or there's some I don't know what the reason is, but they don't want to enforce the constitution. They want to create workarounds. I'm not interested yeah. in working around fraud. Yeah. I'm not interested in working around is. genocide. I'm not interested in working around human trafficking. I'm only interested in stamping it out. Tell them again, Mother. And that's what that constitution will do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And our mm-hmm. problem is, some of the, the problem with our people is that they're they're sitting there waiting for somebody else to solve the problem as is it's somebody else's problem, and they like, oh yeah, they'll make a rule or a law mm-hmm. to fix this. It is, and not knowing that only person that can change this is us. Yes, yeah, so because right. that, you know what? You're so right. Identifying, identifying that. How do you identify that? De facto corporations. Yeah, exactly. Well, well that's the question. And when people say that, they're like, well, they, they're, they're going to switch, and, and that is the question, and that is the question. Who is that? Who is they? The same people that's, that's been molesting you? The same people that's been abusing <laughs> you? Are you talking about they, that they're, they're going to make a new rule or something that's going to stop this? I don't think so. Yeah. No, no they're they're not now. they do things. They do things based on revenue. This was all about. A, this is a business for them. That's why I keep telling people, go and research these county, city, town, township boroughs. Go and research them. You will find that they are in a business. They were established as a company. They're still a company slash corporation today. Some of them are incorporated, and some of them are not. And they tell you that right on the World Wide Web. And I just learned that in order for them to be sued, we need to sue the person who is operating through the foreign for-profit corporation, Islam. Well, you can't sue. Unless I can be corrected. Even in, even in their charter, it says capable of, be, of suing and being sued. Now, the reason that they say that is because that's a violation of the American Constitution, but many of those charters were established prior to the Constitution. And so, um, if you look at the Constitution, the only thing that can apply here for real with all parties knowing the law is a claim from one flesh and blood being to another flesh and blood being. The Constitution made it unlawful for any corporation to presume to sue another, and that's why those charters are defunct. They will continue to operate as companies, you know, as long as the people are asleep. And it was very easy to put the people to asleep, put the people to sleep, because if you look at the uh, the history of the the schools, the schools were never established for Moors. 
The schools were yeah. established for the, the the indentured servants because when they were at work, it became uh, imperative to to ed- to educate the next crop of workers. And so that's why the schools were established. The schools were established to teach the indentured servants slash slaves, Slavics, modern Europeans, erroneously called white people, to take the position of their parents. That's why it was established. It was never established for Moors. But if you look at our history, we had some sellout more that made it look enticing for, you know, and it, and it didn't happen overnight. It was a gradual in uh, happening. They made the they made the um, moors because you know we started losing information because our elders were going and we were going in another direction. So it only took they had to first get us to get out of the matriarchal mode and into the patriarchal mode, and then once in that patriarchal mode, establish a leader of that patriarchy, and then that. Every that leader of that patriarchy would then dictate what the rest of the people would do, and so once they infiltrated him, which and and I will and if you want to see how that works, watch Zygus two. All right. Yeah. You want to see how that works? Go and watch Zygus two. They infiltrate the leader guy person. And they find one within, in, in another place where you can find that is in 300. I think it's the rock, it could be the first or the rise, where they find one of the family that's dis- disgruntled and they, 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 you know, make his, they swell up his head and he will go in and take out the leader and then put himself as leader, and not a modern Europeans can manipulate the whole family because they got an inside guy. It's also called the Trojan horse. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's how these modern Europeans got us to to get rid of the, the, the educating that we did because we didn't educate by having somebody who wasn't even doing what they're teaching, teaching the people. We never had that. We matched up people based on what they were drawn to. And and you and you learned by doing what they did. And you might have gone and because you enjoyed it so much because you you was matched based on your desire. You know, what you were what you were drawn to, you would create you might create an intricate way that created a more beautiful design and so then that became then that person became the master and they taught that to future generations all of that is gone just about all of the elders that were the master masons the master cabinet makers the master electricians the master mechanics they're all in convalescent homes somewhere or just sitting somewhere with all this knowledge in their head. And the new generation of children that's going to these trade schools, they only know how to do things in a uniform manner with absolutely nothing to it. And if you watch, like, um, the HGTV, where they are, they call themselves flipping houses, they tell you, oh, this is the standard cabinet, this is the standard floor, this is the standard sink, everything is standard. It's, it's, it's not a beautiful work of art anymore because the Moors have given up the trade, and now the modern Europeans is doing it. And we need to get back into that. We need Agreed. to stop going to places like like uh, Puritans and Macy's and all. We need to stop going to those places to buy furniture, and people need to start making furniture again. Indeed. We, you know that's what that's that's our history. Now, the only reason that these companies can continue is because we have given up our history. We suppose we sitting here talking about we need to keep our money in our community, but we ain't we ain't producing no merchandise. How are we gonna do that? 
Mm, yeah. Mm, mm. Islam. <laughs> I wanted to add to that since you brought up trade. Uh, I, I and I, I remember y'all laughing before because I think I shared this with brother um, Taj Tariq Bay. I do have that HVAC trade under my belt, and when I went to the, one of their uh, institutions, I was e- it was easy for me to see past their curriculum to see that oh, okay. Here's a trade where you can, you know, enjoy yourself making others feel comfortable. When it's too hot, you can cool them. When it's too cold, you can warm them. And, and that, and, and it is a, a art as well as a science. And they had one little particular, uh, what they call modules. And they had one module that is broken down in two, which is the sheet metal fabrication module. And in their curriculum, they only have you set to do eight of them. And I was so in love with the art of it that they teach you different um, uh, ways of measuring and bending metal, that I was able to do 17 projects, and I couldn't get enough of it. So uh, to, long story short, I, I told my instructor, well, what they call instructors, because I, I can't see them really after, after you know, meeting the prophet that they're my instructors, them being our Albion sons. But uh, to continue, um, I say, hey, I, I think I can design systems. Ha 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 ha! You've only been here for a couple months, son. What, what system are you going to design? It's going to take 20 years of college. But I I knew for some reason in my head, just by looking and putting my hands on this and then learning the science of what they call thermodynamics, I realized that you you know I think I could really build a system. And 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 I will say that with that just being innately in me, that's how I know that there is some energy out there that will help to, you know, nurture that or or to bring that out even more, even though I continue to to study it myself. And and that's the beauty about about the trade, it both being a science and an art, because science, to to some degree, is the service to art. You you know, we, we, we wouldn't have the art if it wasn't for the science, but if we do allow these inferior minds, whom we first taught in the first place these trades, to continue to further indoctrinate us away from what the reality is of who we truly are, and that is the fathers and mothers of civilization. So, yeah, when it comes to plumbing, when it comes to electrical, when it comes to framing or anything, and it's funny you brought up Flip or Flop because if you notice what their appellations are, Tariq Il Musa, but I digress. Uh, peace, <laughs> Islam. Islam. All right, Islam. 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 Yeah. Well, Islam yeah. family, Islam to San Al, Sister Rod, I got cut off before, but dear sweet Jayana, she, she hooked me back up in there. But I, <laughs> <love the show. laughs> I love her. I like called to, I called, excuse me, I called her, asked her if she could just email me that site with, with the courts that she was talking about before I was kicked out. <clears throat> but anyway, I want to share this little thing that happened. I was at the post office the other week and, um, I purchased some money or this one I didn't need, so I wanted to just cash it back in. <clears throat> so, yes, it's amazing now that I find when they ask for identification, they just ask for identification. They don't specifically say driver's license anymore. So I presented my um, nationality card. So that, uh, Wait a minute, did you say it doesn't say driver's license anymore? No, when, I was, when he didn't ask for a driver's license, he just asked for identification. So I said, okay, oh, okay. maybe this teaching them a little okay. something now. But anyway, so I <laughs> my nationality card, and uh, he says, oh, uh, what is this? I said, a lawful government identification, my nationality card. He says, um, uh, well, um, I- I'm not familiar with this. I said, uh, I said, well, what are you? What's your nationality? He says, an American. I said, America is not a nationality. It's a continent. I said, and obviously, you don't look like me, so you can't be really an American. I said, you look Asian, so and I don't want to misrepresent and call you something that you're not, so, you know, which country? So then he said, Korea. I said, oh, well, I'm Moorish American, Aboriginal Indigenous to the land, and this is the lawful, this is the government here. It's the Moroccan. I said, this is al Malak. He said, oh, you mean cross I said, no, no, no. This is the empire, al Malak that you're standing on right here, and that's a lawful government ID. I'd have no more problem. The man's eyebrows went up, and then, you know, I finished my transaction. But I tell you, it's, it's amazing. Uh-huh. Like you said, they, they know. They know. They know. Mm-hmm. Well, he still didn't identify himself properly because he's Manchurian, Islam. 
Yeah, right. No, right. No, no, no. right. But they see, we are more people. of their America sure is the more. bastardization of our Morocco, so we are the uh, more American national. You know, mm-hmm. uh, like America is, in fact, the name, uh, what, what's tagged as the land. But we don't give up the fact that the, the when you look up uh, uh, American, it says, the various copper tone people found on the planet by the, I mean, found on the continent by the Europeans when they got here. All right. So we don't give up the American because more an American is really the same in that mm-hmm. respect. Mm-hmm. Right. So we got to, because if we do, then who's, who's the American? I mean, yes, this is our Moroccan, but this is our Moroccan America is the same thing. Right. All right. And that's, what, that's why I let him know that I, I was an American, a Moorish American. I made that clear to him, you know. Right, because, but, see, he's uh, an American. He, me and Anna, he, we, we, we go through this and we're going to iron this out. He is a citizen of the United States of America. So, in short, people can say, well, he is an American citizen. But some people say no, because, see, we're not really citizens other than citizen means member of our nation state. We are nationals. We're American nationals. And if it wasn't for the nationals, there would be no citizenship rankings. When we poured them, pulled them into government proper, they became United States of America citizens. So that, 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 that distinction is we don't want, like, we don't want to say they're American citizens, but they are United States of, because the United States of America means some United States of the American land, you see? And so mm-hmm. he knows, he told you, he, he said Korea. You'll have, it's just like St. Patrick's Day just went, St. Patrick's Day. All of those people prior to St. Patrick's Day was doing what they do, and they call themselves Americans, but they, they're not so well, I'm Irish-American, but it really is no such thing as Irish-American. You're either Irish as a nationality, right, or you're American, mm-hmm. and you damn sure ain't an American, because as a nationality, they could never, ever, ever, ever be an American, because that's for us. More American is the same thing. So you gave him a lesson there because he probably came over and got quote unquote so called naturalized as an American citizen. But it has to be clear as a United States of American citizen because even when Michelle Obama a few months back did one of those immigration things, she made it real clear that you are becoming a United States of America citizen. You know, we right. have to understand those final those finite those, uh uh fine distinctions. Islam. Wow. Islam, well, that um, concludes Seems like this broadcast. So, unless, uh, Raj, you got anything more you want to add? No, I do not. Um, uh, I think that we have finalized. I thought that somebody, I thought Liz was coming on with something, but I guess not. We may have left the building. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. He's here, but I don't know. I don't know if he has anything to add. Let me see. Maybe I need to unmute him. You talking about me? No, no, no. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me see. <laughs> My bad. Let me see. Uh, did I unmute him? Oh, I unmuted the wrong person. Let me see. Now nah, he's not there. I thought he was. All right. Well, I think that we have, and really, the whole point is that. Anything. The whole point is that um, the treaty is a national document, national treaty, and it applies to Moors. And enforcing the Constitution is enforcing the treaty as well. You not listen to people. I've heard some people say, "Oh, that was just an agreement between one man and another." Like, like in other words, the Sultan was one man. No, Sultan is a position. It is a a, a, a titled position. So anyone could, you know, take that position. But um, don't believe that. Recognize that um, everything, all of the rules of engagement is being broken by these corporations seeming to be government. Stop giving them that energy. They are not government. But because we keep giving it to them and propping them up as such, 
you know, they'll continue to do so. So they are corporations, and it looks like they're getting nasty with you. Like I said, if you say, well, look, I have a right to travel, I mean, it should be done over. They want to beat you upside the head, arrest you. If we don't make action now in regards to um, this particularly and especially the personal liberty of traveling, next month they will have it as a crime for real in their book and their mind right. that you committed a crime and then they'll try to, you know, give you, I mean, they're doing it now, really, but we have got to end it. Well, you Not know to. what? I just want to say this, and then we can um, end this in this broadcast. You said that they they're real nasty about it. Well, they're real nasty about it because if we don't voluntarily give them income, they don't get a paycheck. So they right. get nasty. <laughs> they just, I'm, yeah. I'm just saying they just they get nasty. But you know what? It's too bad because that's not what this country was set. This country is not about that. We didn't invite yeah. them over here or allow them to stay so that they can do this. So you know what? If you're about to lose your job, it's too bad. You you either don't have to find something and become industrious, you know, just like um, George Washington said in the treaty, you know, you're going to have to find some way to be useful. Yeah. All right? That's yeah, all they there is to it. Yeah, useful, violating mm-hmm. everybody else's uh, liberty. That's how that's no, they can't be about that. They can't be mm-hmm. useful violating people's liberty because, you know, the Constitution put, put a stop to that. And the only reason it's going on now is because the vast majority of people have forgotten. Everybody is clear what to do. You can go into a Walmart or a Macy's and their employee violates you, but when another... An employee of another corporation violates you. People who've been mentally conditioned don't fight back. Just let them do what they going to do. No, it's time to, and that's the end of this broadcast. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, Mother Anna E. Before you go, before you go, because you just said that, I wanted you to, uh, I wanted to ask you and Mother Roz real quick because I do have an action that I want to take, and before I do make it, I did want to. Uh, have you as counsel to just review what it is that I put together. So if we have to uh, uh, exchange uh, further info through the email when we can do a phone conference or if I can make it to the North uh, Carolina uh, State Republic for uh, that uh, time between April 8th and 10th, I will. I will do my best. But I want to make sure before I make this action because, yes, there's nothing happening as far as our right to travel because no one is suing yet. And I do, to the best of my knowledge, have all of the parties. I have all of the cause of action. I have all of the documentation that I need. I just needed to sit with the family as counsel, not to represent me, not to make it happen for me, but so that I'm making sure and getting the verification that when I go in there to throw the first and second stone out of those five from that brook, that I'm sure to penetrate the pineal gland of Goliath, for lack of better words, Islam. Islam. Just so that you know, I'm not going to be in North Carolina in April, so I don't know where that came from. I'm not sure about Roz. Uh, I'm not aware of that event. I don't have any events for North Carolina. That's fine. But, uh, um, yes, um, you're talking about that event on the 8th, the 9th, and the 10th, of which um, we were invited Anna E may be there if she can make it happen. We can make it happen. Um, but uh, there, is, there is to be there. Uh, that's during the spring, what they call the spring something. So there's a lot of college people traveling and uh, getting out of their spring break or whatever the heck it is, whatever they're doing. Um, and uh, also, uh, I think I understand Kuja may be there now. I just found that out. Um and Set and Ra, Taj, and myself. So uh, even if I were there, I can tell you one thing. I wouldn't be reviewing the one document. <laughs> Not okay, there. that's fine. <laughs> but if you make it there, you know, or if Anna E is there and you want to uh, hand it to her or whatever like that, but then again, I don't know what we would be doing because it's been um, it's like a two-day affair. So we'll see how that works. Otherwise than that, you can just email it 
I will. And that would work fine. You wouldn't have to wait until April. Absolutely. All right. Thank you, mothers. Thank you so much, family. Happy New Year. Peace and love, Islam. All right. All right. Peace and love, Well, that concludes this descendant on law. We shall see you back here next month, the 17th of April, for the next broadcast. And we will look around and see what we can come up with to study, talk about, build on. Peace and love. And again, Happy New Year's to everyone. It's long. Now, you got the music queued up. Which one is the one that we use for today? We have... Um, well, we can do, um, what was the one we used to start out with? The emotions? Which one? You mean before you put on weight, we are family? Yeah. All right. It's called, is it elevation music? No. It should say sister standing on law. All righty, let me find it. We got so much stuff. This is standing on lock. Here. <laughs> Excellent sound that effect. <laughs> that was a great sound effect. We got to get one. It just says sister standing on lock. That's it, right? I think that's it. That is it. It's long piece of love. All righty. <laughs> Here it is. All right.